Hey there, I'm Benjamin from Love's Data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to start using Google Tag Manager to streamline the management of your tags. We'll begin with an overview of what Google Tag Manager is. We'll cover terminology you'll see inside Google Tag Manager, including tags, triggers, and variables. And I'll show you how to get started by adding Google Analytics to your website using Google Tag Manager. I've also included a quiz at the end of the video so you can test your Google Tag Manager knowledge. Google Tag Manager lets you manage all of your marketing and analytics tags in one place. It acts as a layer between your website and the different platforms you're using. It also allows you to streamline the management of the different tags you're using. For example, you might want to add a Google Analytics tag to all of the pages of your website. And then you might decide to add a Google Ads conversion tag and a Facebook event to an individual thank you page. You could hard code the Google Analytics tag in your website's template and then add the Google Ads tag and Facebook event tag to the specific page. However, this will quickly become difficult to manage and it's easy to lose track of where tags have been installed. With Google Tag Manager, we add one piece of code to all of the pages on our website. This is the container. We then configure Google Tag Manager to fire tags on particular pages or for particular actions. So that's really the key benefit of Google Tag Manager. It lets you centrally manage all of your tags. Now let's cover some important terminology. First, tags. In most cases, a tag is a piece of JavaScript code. They typically collect data and then send it to a particular platform, like a Google Analytics tag, which collects information about the people viewing our website or we can also use a tag to add additional functionality to our website. For example, we could use a tag to add a social sharing widget to our blog, or we could use the Google Optimize tag to personalize the content people see on our website. Next are triggers. Triggers let you control when a tag should or shouldn't fire on your website. For example, we could use the built-in all pages trigger to add a tag to every page of our website. And we can also create our own triggers. Maybe we want to track people clicking the announcement banner we have featured at the top of our website. Or maybe we want to fire a specific tag on a thank you page. We can do this by creating and applying triggers to our tags. Then there are variables. Variables are placeholders for information that we can use in Google Tag Manager. For example, we might want to capture details about a link someone has clicked on our website. We can then use this information in our tags, triggers, and even other variables. There is a range of built-in variables that let us access information automatically, and we can also create custom variables. And then we have our container. A container stores all of the tags, triggers, and variables for our website. When we add Google Tag Manager to our website, we're adding the Google Tag Manager container code. You can find your container code by clicking the unique ID at the top of the window. It will start with GTM dash. We're now given two pieces of code. The first one is the most important. This is the JavaScript container code. And you'll need to add this to all of the pages of your website. This code should be placed inside the head tag on your website. And ideally should be one of the first things in your head tag. The second piece of code is the NoScript version of the container. This will load if someone has JavaScript disabled. Since almost all of the tags we use in Google Tag Manager are JavaScript, this won't improve the accuracy of the data we collect. So if you can't add this extra NoScript code to your website, it won't have a major impact. Now it's time to add the code to our website. There are different ways you can add the container code depending on how you've created your website. For example, if you're using WordPress, then you can use a plugin to add the container to all of your pages. Let's head to WordPress to take a look. This is the Site Kit by Google plugin for WordPress. It's just one of the plugins you can use to add the container code to all of the pages of your WordPress site. To add Google Tag Manager, let's install the plugin. and activate it.
now you'll need to follow the steps to authorize access to your Google account. Now we need to connect Google Tag Manager. To do this, we select Settings. And then Connect More Services. We can then connect Google Tag Manager. We select our account and container. And now our Google Tag Manager container has been added to all of the pages of our WordPress site. If you're using a different website platform, then I recommend searching the support documentation from your platform provider. This should give you details on how to add the Google Tag Manager container code. And if you'd like me to create a video covering your platform, then let me know in the comments below. Okay, now that we've added Google Tag Manager to our website, it's time to configure our first tags. Let's head to Google Tag Manager. We're going to start by adding Google Analytics to our website. So let's create a new tag. Let's name the tag Google Analytics GA4 and let's select Tag Configuration. We're going to start by selecting GA4 Configuration as the tag type. This is for the latest version of Google Analytics, which is Google Analytics 4 or GA4. In this video, we're just going to focus on adding the tags, but if you would like to learn more about GA4, then I've included a link in the extra resources in the description below this video. Now we need to get our measurement ID, so let's head to Google Analytics. This is the admin area of a GA4 property, and I'm going to select Data Streams. And then I'm going to select the data stream for my website. You can now copy the measurement ID for your data stream on the top right corner. And now we can head back to Google Tag Manager. Let's paste our measurement ID. And now we need to select a trigger for our tag. We're going to select the All Pages trigger. This will fire our J4 tag on all of the pages of our website. This will mean we can report all of the pages people see when they visit our website. Now let's save the tag. And we're going to add another tag. Let's create a new tag. And this time we're going to name the tag Google Analytics UA. Let's select Tag Configuration. And we will choose Universal Analytics as the tag type. This is for the older version of Google Analytics, but Google is still recommending we use both types of properties to track our website. So I want to take advantage of both versions of Google Analytics. We're going to leave Page View as the track type for the tag and we're going to select the option to create a new variable using the drop-down under Google Analytics Settings. Let's name the variable Google Analytics UA. And now we need to head back to Google Analytics. This is the admin area for a Universal Analytics property. Let's select Tracking Info and then Tracking Code. We need to copy our tracking ID, which is at the top. Now let's head back to Google Tag Manager. Let's paste our tracking ID into the variable. And let's save the variable. Now we need to add a trigger to our Universal Analytics tag. Let's select the All Pages trigger again. And let's save our tag. I'm going to cover best practices for previewing tags in another video, so if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to be notified when I release more videos covering Google Tag Manager. There's also the option to publish the changes you've made to your live website. This is the Submit button. 
I do want to point out that if you already have the Google Analytics tag on your website, you will want to remove this at the same time you publish your changes. Otherwise, you'll have the tag from Google Tag Manager and your existing Google Analytics tag on your website. So two identical tags, which isn't good. So I will also be covering migration in more detail in another video. For now, you've successfully added your first tags to Google Tag Manager, and you understand the difference between tags, triggers, and variables. That's our introduction to Google Tag Manager. Are you ready to test your Google Tag Manager knowledge? You can find a link to my Google Tag Manager quiz in the description below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Tag Manager, then subscribe to my channel because next week I'll show you how to add more tags to your website. We'll cover the Google Ads remarketing tag, adding Google Optimize, and adding the Facebook Pixel. I'll see you in the next video.